Gavin, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Rich, I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of The Six Sessions. Each week, I get the chance to chat to somebody doing something amazing in the growth uh, space that's either marketing, sales, or customer experience. The grand plan is to make me smarter by hanging out with people doing interesting stuff, hopefully, therefore, making me semi-interesting in the process. The original plan was to ask each guest six questions over six minutes, and let's be honest, I've balls that up for the last three episodes. So the plan is to keep them short and sweet, but honestly, they're going to get a bit longer, um, and I think we'll we'll all uh, come to terms with that because I'm enjoying the conversations more than anything. Um, so we'll keep it short and uh, sweet, but remember, it's unfiltered. So I am will probably swear throughout the episode. Uh, being, being a good Irish lad, I'm, I'm sure Gavin might sneak one in there at some point. Um, and, but that's what makes it fun. It's unfiltered, and you'll get some honest thoughts around marketing and growth in general. This week, it's my pleasure to introduce you to a good friend of mine, despite having some questionable taste in cars, and we can cover that in a bit, <laughs> Gavin. Um, Gavin Flood. So Gavin is Senior Director for International Marketing, as well as Head of Ad Role EMEA. So quite a big role, uh, given, given the size of EMEA. Um, he's well versed in leading high performance marketing teams from customer engagement to acquisition and res revenue growth, which, in my opinion, as a marketer, revenue growth is the area that we should definitely be focusing on. It's I've talked about it loads of times. Revenue should be the KPI that we focus on as marketers. And I'm happy to debate that with most people. Um, Gavin's worked across gaming, motor, uh, sports, entertainment, and currently lectures at UCD Smurfett School of Business, where he's uh, lecturer in marketing. So I think it's fair to say he knows his way around marketing. Um, and having had the pleasure of working with Gavin for a number of years now, I can perf personally vouch for that. Um, the dude knows his stuff. Um, so with all that in mind, I'm excited to welcome Gavin on. Gavin, welcome. How was that for an intro? <laughs> Long, Rich, uh, for a start, but uh, thank you for that. I couldn't have written that better myself, so appreciate that. Uh, good to chat to you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm trying to make those uh, introductions as gushing as possible. Um, at some point, I'm going to oh, yeah. try and make somebody blush, but it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Tears up. So, so first question, how's 2020 been for you guys? Oof, um, I would say probably no different to everybody else. It's been a series of ups and downs. Um, if I think about this from kind of like a personal and, and people perspective, it, it's been really challenging. Um, we came into all of this in spring. Um, we went as a company into uh, into work from home mode quite early. Uh, we got ahead of this. So um, we've been at this now coming up on nine months. Uh, and during that time, you know, we've gone through a lot. Um, we have started to think about how we kind of adapt, how we try to engage everybody. We have taught a lot about uh, simple things like just meeting people where they are right now. And there's a lot to unpack in all of that. So uh, as the year has progressed, we saw um, challenges initially uh, around everything that this brought. Summer uh, saw starting to get into a good operational rhythm. In Ireland, we went back into a lockdown at the uh, end of September, which we've just come out of now. Combining that with winter, longer, de shorter days, longer nights, it's it's again been a, a challenge. So it's been a series of up and down cycles, and I think we're probably at a stage now that uh, we're ready for the break uh, as uh, as it comes now for year end and uh, recharge the batteries ahead of um, uh, January. Yeah, I I can definitely relate to that feeling. So um, engage engagement, like remote team engagement, I think is one of those things that we we hear a lot about at the moment. So like, what are what are some of the things that uh, you guys are doing at Adrol for that? and making sure people are engaged and kind of monitoring that mental health piece. Yeah, uh, and it's been a tough journey. You know, we, we like everybody, you know, uh, quizzed everybody to what an inch our life in the first, you know, five or six weeks of, of this. But we, you know, we quickly, you know, got, got, got feedback from everybody that, you know what, you, there's just so much going on. There's such a heavy cognitive load to carry. You need to give people space. And that was a clear message that we got. Uh, and in doing that, we started to think about just meeting people where they were. So like a really simple example of this is that a lot of teams are very keen to kind of bring everybody together as much as you can. Um, and you might do that over lunches or things like that. We took a slightly different approach. We did this thing called Foodie Fridays and we introduced them a couple of months ago and we deliberately ordered more food than one person would need, which meant that if people wanted to kind of have that lunch at home, which they're better halves or with family or to do it another time, they could. 
um, we made um, you know the the chat to kind of come and join if you wanted to for lunch completely optional with people so what we found out of that is kind of people really appreciated the gesture and people just did things on their own terms some had lunch with family some had dinner and um, some joined the hangout and caught up with others but everybody did it on their own terms and we found that you know a real salutary lesson in terms of engaging people and we took that um you know that lesson and 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 feedback and start to try to apply it to a lot of the other things that we have done uh including how we try to support people you know managing the anxiety and the stress that they're going through at the moment we have we've done a number of sessions to try just um not, not just give people guidance around how they kind of might manage that piece but actually explain to them the triggers around you know when they start to get stressed and, and what that manifests itself in and giving people some guidance helping them um understand it and continuing to check in with people on a, on a regular basis and we've done that with the help of some really really good uh specialists in this area over the last number of months so um if i was to summarize it rich i'd say it's a combination of just meeting people where they are right now in terms of how you're trying to drive engagement while also being there for them in terms of kind of supporting them on this journey they're the they're the two things for us as a as a as a company and as a site that's worked really well for us Having having uh, everybody working from home, though, must be saving AdRoll and every other SaaS company in Dublin a fortune if you're not having to kind of build those breakfast bars and lunches and snacks and all that at the moment, no? No, you should see, you you should see those meals that we push out for fru- foodie Fridays now. Very, yeah. very, very, <laughs> very, very, very impressive. Um, you know, it, it is kind of swings and roundabouts on this piece, and you start to kind of look at investments that you make everywhere else. And one of the things that we've been very committed to is actually supporting the work from home setup. You know, yeah. um, you know, for a lot of people, it's really, really challenging. You know, trying to create separation in the home between work and the home life is incredibly difficult, especially if somebody's stuck working in a shared uh, accommodation uh, situation or uh, in a busy household. So being able to kind of do all we can to support that through um, equipment, um, through how we structure work days, it's, that's been a really, really important piece as well. You know, we can't assume that work from home here's a laptop and here's a seat and and away you go it's we've had to do an awful lot more than that Uh, and it's really important because it actually does feed into long-term well-being and engagement as well yeah it's a surprise how many zoom calls like at the beginning i kind of like it makes sense like there was a very quick like rapid um progression to being working from home so not everybody had decent setups and like to be expected i'm surprised how many calls i still have with people where they're kind of on a couch yeah. hunkered over with a laptop i just yeah anyway we're digressing somewhat um so top top level yeah what is what is your business what does adroll do um other than providing lovely meals of a friday uh, for everybody <laughs> here um it, it's on a serious note what we are is quite simply we're, we're a marketing platform for growing direct to consumer brands. So um, what we do is through our machine learning, which is really our, our secret sauce and, and, and what we're, you know, we're known for um, and tools like media, email and measurement, we help brands uh, firstly find their best customers um, then engage with them um, and then look to try and optimize those outcomes so they can kind of really focus on growing their business uh, and doing it in a way that kind of lets them get on with actually thinking about more strategic de- decisions or other areas of the business that they need to focus on. So that's that's our mission. Uh, that's where, what we're, we're, we're deeply, deeply uh, focused on and, and, and what we're trying to do um, in not only in EMEA, but across the globe. Who and who's the ideal client? Uh, ideal client or ideal customer, as I said, it is that growing direct to consumer brands. You know, I think about some of our our our, our 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 UK customers and 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 the brand they come back to quite um uh, quite regularly is a is a is a, is a London company called Boom who are in the um the, they're in the confectionery space. You know, they're a small uh, upstart brand, um, relatively small team, big ambitions, um completely direct to consumer focused and you know we have worked with them for a number of years to help them you know identify their market help them engage that market and uh, and grow their brand through the tools that we have we provide uh, which has allowed them to kind of spend time on product development um new market identification and things like that so it's been it's been it's been a great ride uh, not only with brands like um bump but um a lot of their peers as well so um that kind of just probably gives you a kind of a bit of a flavor of um companies we work with and so like i understand what adroll do mm-hmm. what is it, what's your role within that stack like what what do you do for adroll 
Well, when you uh, read out my <laughs> my, my title, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You, you uh, it, and if the title is anything to go by in terms of how how long it is, um, that was so the longest I, part of the intro. <laughs> So um, if you kind of focus on the core, for me, um, the core in terms of being a marketeer, and I, I report into our, our CMO uh, and, and sit as part of that uh, core marketing team, which has kind of like three functional areas. It's got a brand and buzz team. It's got a growth team and it's got a product marketing team. And as someone who leads the international marketing function, I kind of cut across all three of them. Um, and I'm essentially I'm looking to try and make sure that, you know, what we're focused on through those teams is brought to life in EMEA. Um, if you kind of look at what my core competencies is and where I kind of lean in really, really heavily right now is probably in the, the brand and buzz team, which is made up of functional areas like community and content and advocacy and PR, um, you know, identifying um, resources that our customers can find value in and helping them to kind of educate themselves and their businesses so that they can really help come on that journey of growing their business is a thing that I'm hugely focused on. So leading the teams around that, bringing that to life in EMEA is kind of like a core part of my role. Um, and then in my spare time, I'm also the site lead for the um, for the team here uh, in EMEA. Um, and that kind of has kind of like core, three core areas of responsibility to it. You know, one of one of those one of those is kind of like um, is, is is engagement. You know, making sure the team is is engaged, and I spend a lot of time on that. Secondly, is making sure that we're aligned aligned around that that vision that I spoke about earlier. Um, and then thirdly, is is like is being an advocate and being a champion for 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 the uh, for the Dublin office in the EMEA region. You know, showcasing the impact that we 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 are having and can continue to have as we look to try to expand our charter. Um, here in EMEA. Have they have they just turned the lights off behind you? It just got dark all of a sudden. <laughs> Probably has. That's us. You asked you asked us earlier how we're saving money, and we have that we have we have, we have the light saving lights in here. So if I if I start waving my hand frantically here, they'll probably go back on in a sec. So you're you're lecturing at uh, Smurfit, right? So yeah, I am. What what got you into lecturing? Because it's a, I mean it's a, a different path from the uh, from the uh, like commercial path. Very different ball game. It is. Uh, I suppose what kind of led me on this path is, you know, when I first got into marketing, I, I only reflected on this a couple of years ago. Um, you know, I think it was more of a personality thing. I'm one of those kind of classic uh, defender type personality. So I'm somebody who kind of, um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm somebody who's kind of like very supportive, likes to help. Um, I would like to think a high degree of empathy, somebody who's quite observant, imaginative. And I think they're kind of like the values that a marketeer kind of really needs to kind of be able to kind of operate in, in, in this field. Um, and that's kind of like what drew me to uh, marketing initially. And I think, you know, throughout my career, and I was fortunate when I when I did uh, leave my undergrad and go into a postgrad, um, my postgrad uh, program was 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 a, was just hugely, hugely uh, important to me. Uh, it was a class of 30 of which about 20 of us are still um, in touch with each other and, and well connected but uh, throughout my time and my career I, I stayed very close to that program and um, in the last 12 months having done a lot of mentoring on that program uh, having come back and spoken to the class of various different subjects I was asked to come back and take one of the courses and lecture it so it, it kind of just evolved from that more than me kind of actively looking for it but I have to say having done the the first go round of it now this year it was uh, I really enjoyed it uh, it was great to be able to uh, you know, get in there and have some really good conversations with the with the next generation of marketeers who I have to say are about ten times smarter than I was at that age. <laughs> That's a scary, scary thought. <laughs> so you're basically training people that are going to come into the market and push you out of a job. Yeah, essentially, when you look at it like that, that's a space. It's especially yeah, what, what it is. So uh, that's yeah, that's what it boils down to. That's right, the, the pubs are open in Dublin now, so at least you have something to do. I, I will absolutely, absolutely. So that, it leads quite nicely onto my next question. What excites you most about marketing at the moment? Um, I think what excites me most about marketing right now is it is the it's just the strategic impact it can have. You know, you talked about you know revenue as a driver, and I think you know we have so much by way of um, you know technology and, and 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 insight to be able to kind of understand how marketing is driving commercial impact. You know, I've been around long enough to kind of remember the days when I first came into marketing, and you know, if you think about marketing as kind of like origination implementation and justification if it's like those three buckets like back in the day like only a small fraction of it was justification because we kind of really didn't know what was working so we were spending all of this time creating all of these great ideas looking at how we kind of 
bring it to life and um, knowing that we didn't have a huge amount of tools at our disposal to kind of really understand the impact that's kind of like shifted completely the other way now you know we can analyze things to within an inch of its life so while i would argue that probably the origination piece has probably been uh, un, you know undervalued a little bit in recent times you know implementation and justification have definitely gotten uh, a bigger share of mind with marketeers and uh, in that regard it excites me that we have the ability to be able to kind of go toe to toe with um, all the other departments in terms of you know as i said being an equal partner rather than being this support function that marketing might have historically have been seen as in the past so what are you working on now so if, if that's the stuff that's exciting you like what are you working on at the moment um i think like most marketeers we're in the space where it's 2021 planning um, how many how many times have you ripped up your plans in the last 12 months oh man a day uh, i think we kind of got to the point where we kind of just you, you, it, it, and it's actually a really interesting question and one of the things that we have been you, you asked me firstly what am i most excited about and i think i'm most excited about um our efforts around community um uh, community is something which was a big bet for us as we turned the year this year and we had big plans to try and identify you know to try and you know bring that to life we had a we spoke about this actually at the start of the year and you heard me talk about you know our plans to bring this across europe a series of in-person meets to bring like-minded marketeers together help them kind of you know understand connect and then bring them into an online community and of course come march that got blown up completely and then like everyone else we started to try and move this online and of course you know people were just overwhelmed and, and kind of respectively kind of said listen i just need to take it take a breather and step away from this and i actually did the same i i took a step back from some of the communities that i was involved in personally and um what we've been doing is not kind of putting that into cold storage or anything but we've actually just said you know what we're just going to take a kind of like a little bit of a holding um uh, position on this and uh, stay engaged with that community look to kind of see how they're managing through all of this and then doing that kind of like understanding where they are and I think we've done a really good job on that over the last nine months to the point where we kind of know what community should really mean for marketeers in in, in 2021 and uh, what it is that they need you know focusing in on their needs at an individual level level I, I think about you know the work you've done with the, the humans come first podcast and event um rich and and how you think about you know enabling the future generation of marketeers and helping them grow and develop because we're helping growing and developing direct to consumer brands upstart brands brands who are starting on their journey um the marketeers who are part of that you know are are, are hungry to grow and learn themselves and if we can build a community that kind of helps them do that, helps them kind of educate themselves, helps them uh, uh, understand their roles better, empower them and help them on that journey, you know, that's great. Uh, and of course, you know, that will generate goodwill and reciprocity towards that role as well in, in, in our journey to kind of grow our business too. How, there's a, like a lot of online learning. So I think um, I can think of probably five or six off the top of my head of like well-known marketers who've created like learning courses, communities, things like that. How yeah. how do you guys cut through the noise and chaff and kind of get that message to to those marketers that you're trying to help? Yeah, I think one of the things that we are trying to do is, well, one of the things we've kind of identified is that, you know, people have a lot going on right now you know so what we have what we what we provide them with in terms of whether it's insight whether it's analysis has to be really bite-sized for them to be able to kind of take and use uh stuff that stuff that is actionable, stuff that is not only actionable but is also kind of grounded in what is being done uh, across the board the question we have probably been asked more than any other this year by marketeers is what's happening out there what is everyone else doing so there is actually this desire to kind of understand what you know what what what, what your peer set are doing and what they're doing so if we can kind of tap into that harness that and bring that together so it really kind of comes down to if i was to summarize it it's about it, it's about having a community that doesn't broadcast at people we don't want to be kind of saying here's a load of resources and just throw them over the fence at people it really is that 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 engagement piece and i know that might sound a little bit trite but it, it actually requires a huge amount of effort, uh, a huge amount of understanding and, and to be really committed to it. And if we can kind of do that and bring people along and, you know, uh, just bit by bit, little by little, you know, identify those conversations, those insights, take them very quickly. It's almost like a, it's almost like feedback loops whereby you kind of you're able to identify something very quickly, take it, package it, share it, get some validation for it and kind of maybe talk about how you kind of might take action on that to be able to help brands move forward. 
So I, I, I really like that approach of kind of, so the, the, the way I look at it and like I've been thinking about this a lot lately is that to like, if you want to be in a position and this isn't just for like COVID times, but if you want to be in a position where you can break the rules, push the boundaries, grow, you, you kind of have to understand the landscape first. Let's, I mean, you can pot luck, you can get lucky, you can come in, not understand the landscape and you get lucky or you understand the landscape and then you can push those. And I think mm-hmm. that, that um and and I think so there's there's probably part, that's the bit that I like about what you're proposing because you can kind of learn through others what the landscape looks like what people are trying how that's working the mm-hmm. other thing that I I can really appreciate is when the world is on fire and everybody's going like what the fuck is going on what are we going to do like I'm I'm being pushed by the board to bring in more marketing but I don't know what those plans are because I've ripped them up thirty times in the last month like there's an element of like safety in numbers like if you you can kind of float with the crowd for a little bit to just actually figure out what's going on that's like conversely so we spoke to dan council last week who runs a he's a creative director for an agency called offended marketing and they they champion almost that like that marmite approach to marketing you love it you hate it and that's that's the idea is you don't as a marketer have to appeal to everybody and i think he's he's taken the opposite track where he he's people well and like the people who employ him or kind of give him the briefs they want to do something that swims away from that crowd but i think you still importantly have to understand what the crowd are doing before you can push away from it yeah i i totally agree um two things went in there firstly i'm incredibly impressed that it took you up until the 20th minute to curse for the first time in this session i think that must be a new record in any meeting that you have and i've known you a long time rich so congratulations on that you've you've come a long way um secondly you know that piece around you know uh, wanting to kind of like create separation and you know you you're absolutely right you can't be everything to everybody and when we think about community it's almost like a subset of our icp so we think about this at an individual level rather than a brand level because we can't come in and help every brand and every problem that they have but what we can do is think about the individuals and the challenges they have uh, and be able to kind of help in that regard and if we're able to kind of get really honed on you know those marketeers, the level they're at, the experience they have, the positions they hold, uh, and that in itself creates a lot of kind of connected tissue amongst them and gives us a really strong basis in which to engage people and deliver deliver real value for them because suddenly, you know, we're kind of going much, much deeper on a smaller set of problems that they might have. And that's where you get real value rather than kind of just like dipping into other pieces at a very shallow level. And that's it's so like some of the, the the classic like marketing Mary type content is very much around empowering marketing Mary to be able to like um, like upsell and like address the challenges that individually they have. And like challenges like that will be things around um, how do you re- like what does your board want to see back from a report? Like how do you ma- like manage up the chain? All of that kind of stuff. And that's that is individual basis. And I think they are the questions that people want to be answered um, when they're learning this stuff. Because and I think quite often, when, like you, you touched on it before, like theory learning is great, but the practical stuff is where you learn that. And you don't learn what, particularly if you're managing upper chain, you don't learn what the board wants until you go through that process, unless you can dip into a community who has or are going through that process as well. So I am a huge believer in the, the power of community. Um, yeah. And that's what, like you, you mentioned the humans come first stuff that we're doing with Joe and like an ad role were a big part of that. And it's like that community aspect is the stuff that I personally enjoy from it because we learn loads um, from that engagement. Yeah, it okay. does. And it's, it's very rewarding and and you know it, you know if i was to summarize this when I, you think about community it almost comes down to you know, like what are the next 10 words you know being able to give people answers to what those next 10 words are is really important so for you, you say something like you know engagement is really important to brands right now you need to focus on engagement great but how do i do that community should be a place whereby you can kind of like really unpack that well here's what engagement means if you're creating content here's what engagement means if you're writing um loyalty based newsletters for your for your for your customers here's what engagement means if you're trying to build a brand for yourself on social it's really getting into those pieces and that's what community can do and deliver and really helping um uh, marketeers grow well com- like community can almost answer some of those nuanced questions as well because again like book learning is great and like i'm not downplaying that at all but mm-hmm. you can only learn what is kind of explicitly outlined in front of you but as like as marketers 
there's nuances around like the sector you're in, the the people that you're you're selling to, the products you're selling, all of those kind of things get rolled in to that. And I think community is a very powerful way to be able to help you answer those with the context. So yep. big big top line question. What's next in marketing? Oof, what is next in marketing? Um It's a, I, I, if I'm honest with you, I really, I really don't know right now. Um, I, I think a lot of it is going to be around how we reset on some of the things that we have been thinking differently or are operating differently on over the last couple of years. I, I've talked a little bit around um, co uh, community for a while and, and kind of like what, what, what that means. You know, you think about some other programs as well, you know, content, you know, content and what kind of providing value through content really, really means. And again, the last nine months has kind of shown us that it's, you know, what, what will help brands grow and engage and delight customers is um, content that answers to questions that they have and um, addresses problems that they're under that, that they're trying to wrestle with at the moment rather than you know content that talks about your product and highlights features and things like that so i do think there will be a lot in terms of just reassessing how we think about um, bringing to market programs that have been around an awful long time but you know in in in, in light of in COVID and, and and how you know brands are, are 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 viewing or how customers are viewing brands and the type of relationship they want uh, i definitely think there will be a lot of of um, reassessment around that can you imagine so, when uh, when you do get back to live events how big your turnout's going to be at that first event Wow, that is. I was actually only talking to somebody uh, the other day about this, and and like even throwing around, around things like you know, if people are going to be kind of concerned around um, e even getting to an event, you know, are we going to start to see you know fewer events with higher production values, and we could even get to a stage where kind of like people are charging into events because you know if there's a, if there is that element involved in it, people will need to be very deliberate around mm -hmm. committing to it, coming to it, and knowing what they want to get out of it. So. I can see a lot of that kind of being uh, being an output of all of this when it comes to live events in the future. I I cannot wait to get to the point where and like I I am an introvert and it takes me a lot of energy to kind of go to events and that but it's I I cannot wait to go and spend an hour just like shaking hands and and chatting shit to other marketers for a bit. I am definitely missing that. Yeah, yeah. I'd use one of my old car car industry analogies and say, yeah, I'm the same. I can't wait to go start kicking tires again. Yeah, exactly. Right, Gavin, thanks for being up for doing the six sessions with me. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. And I enjoy the chat. I always enjoy our chats, but I enjoyed that. Um, if anyone wants to follow up with you, how do you want people to connect? Oh, um, just connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. I'm up there. So just, yeah, just connect with me on LinkedIn. If anyone wants to have a chat or talk about any of this stuff, I'm always up for it. You've chatted a lot about the AdRoll community. Where can people go find that? Oh, just get along to our website, adroll.com, and uh, it will be up in bright lights there for you to, uh, to, uh, to get involved in. Any parting wisdom you want to share with everybody on a Friday afternoon? Oh, just... I suppose when we talked about this at the start before we came on, I think uh, everyone has, you know, gone through an awful lot over the last um, nine months. I think, you know, there is a break coming up. Take it, enjoy it, unplug. The laptop will be there when you come back in January. That's that's what I'm doing. I know it's what you're doing as well. It's, and it's the, it's the right thing to do. Do it and don't feel guilty. Yeah, I cannot wait. It is it is my favorite time of year, not, not because of the necessarily the festivities, but it's the only time as an agency where our clients down tools as well. So mm -hmm. there is, there is no work to be done that we can, and it's it's a nice kind of relaxed time of year. Um, yeah. Gavin, safe drive home in the Audi TT. Thanks everybody, and see you next week um, where we have Rob Massa from Forecast joining us. That would be a great chat. <laughs> did you did you like that final quip there, Gavin? <laughs> I did, I did, I did. I was I thought I was out the gate without that. Now, but you <laughs> you snuck it in just under the line. Thanks everybody. Cheers, Gavin. <laughs>